Hey folks, this is Mike Thompson from the Microsoft Education Team, and we're here with the latest remote learning with Microsoft EDU webinar. Thank you for joining us today. This is our 33rd episode I've learned, so we are just ticking them off. And today we've got dyslexia and distance learning. We have Kate Griggs, CEO of Made by Dyslexia, and Rachel Berger, who is a mix of dyslexia advocate, assistive tech expert, and Microsoft in terms of she works with our accessibility and inclusive team. So a great show today. We're just going to cover the latest updates and news really quick, and then we're going to turn it over to Kate and Rachel. So first off, our remote learning site. This is where we have all the latest and greatest updates for our remote learning tools and free software. The Teams EDU Quick Start Guide, which is the best way to get started really fast with Teams for Education. It's a great guide. It's in many, many different languages. And then there's the remote learning community. Over 6,000 now, I've been told 6,000 strong educators from all around the country and the world in one big community, working together, learning from each other. The Microsoft product team is in there also, helping them out, answering questions, getting support. So it's great to have all those folks in the community. If you have not joined, we encourage you to do that. And for today's updates, so first off, if you haven't already gone to the, there's actually two now, the Made by Dyslexia and Microsoft Education, we partnered with Made by Dyslexia to make free courses on the Microsoft Educator Center. We've got part one, which is the Made by Dyslexia and Dyslexia Awareness course, and part two, which follows up with that course and talks in addition of ways with educators can work with students with dyslexia. We also have a recently launched special education page for early education. It's a new Microsoft Educator Center page. So for much younger children that might be working remote learning or doing remote learning and distance learning with their parents in the very early years, we have a site dedicated to that, as well as a new page on highly capable and twice exceptional children. And so that is a new MEC page that also launched around the same time. That's also available as of last week, and we encourage people to check that out. And with that, now before I introduce Kate, I'm going to tell, it's very brief, the origin story. Now everyone talks about all these superhero movies and the origin stories, so I'll tell the brief origin story of how Kate and I uh, first met up and the whole Made by Dyslexia Microsoft partnership. So it started with a tweet, of course, <laughs> and I didn't know Kate at that point, but I figured I would tweet out to her and find out if she knew about Microsoft Education and the work we've been doing with dyslexia. And I said, uh, DM me, stands for direct message me if you want to hop on a Skype call in the new year. And lo and behold, she direct messaged me. And we got on a Skype call and we talked about the sort of the complimentary things that our two organizations were interested in and working on and excited about. And that all ultimately led to the partnership. And so with that, I'm going to be introducing both Kate and Rachel, where they're going to be uh, talking about a few things, answering questions kind of back and forth between each other. Kate and Rachel also know each other as well. And Kate's the CEO of Made by Dyslexia and the founder. And so with that, I'm going to let Rachel take over the screen share and we're going to kick it over to Kate. Welcome. Thank you, Mike. Um, it's fantastic to be here. Thank you so much for inviting us to uh, do a session with you today. Um, what I'd like to do today is just give you an overview of what we're going to be doing this evening. So to start off with, um, I'd like to give a, 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 a sort of introduction to me and, and my story and why uh, personally why I'm doing what I'm doing. I'd also love Rachel to share her story as well. Um, and then I'd like to tell you a little bit about Made by Dyslexia and what our aims are and what we're trying to achieve. Uh, and then we'll get on to the subject of uh, of this webinar, which is remote learning and, and the sort of some of the difficulties and some of the plus side of of uh, using remote learning for dyslexics. And then uh, Rachel will do a fantastic presentation around some of the assistive tech that supports dyslexia. 
Um, so this session actually really is well and truly made by dyslexia. I'm dyslexic. I have dyslexic kids and obviously I, I'm CEO of Made by Dyslexia and, and a passionate advocate for all things dyslexic. And Rachel also is dyslexic herself with dyslexic kids and an amazing advocate and works with Microsoft. So let me just uh, head over to you, Rachel, and, and you pick up on, on why you're so passionate about this whole subject. Thanks, Kate. So, um, well, first of all, it's so great to be here today, um, the two of us and on this webinar sharing. I'm, uh, you know, I've got a lot of passion in the field and that starts with the organization that I formed more than a, well, about seven years ago now. And the fact that I have three sons, two of which have their share of learning differences. So dyslexia, dyscalculia and dysgraphia. And so um, one of the things that makes me really passionate is the ability that I have to also work with Microsoft and provide real uh, solutions for students that level the playing field and help them get around those roadblocks that they experience in education. Back to you, Kate. Yeah, I mean, passion is everything, isn't it, in this in this field? So many amazing parents um, are, are really championing the cause for their kids and, and doing things to really help dyslexic children thrive better in education. But let me tell you a little bit about Made by Dyslexia. Um, we're a global charity and we are led by successful dyslexics. So all of our staff, actually almost everybody who works for us is dyslexic. Um, we have a, a mission and that is to help the world properly understand, value and support dyslexia. Um, we partner with organisations uh, who can help us to further that goal. Uh, we've done two incredible reports with EY, the big global, global consultancy firm, uh, to actually help the world understand the strengths of dyslexia and also their importance in, in the world today and the job force of, of the future. And of course, we've partnered with Microsoft to create free resources for teachers. Um, dyslexia for a lot of people, they, they think dyslexia is, is just about literacy, but dyslexia is a lot wider than that. Dyslexia is actually a, a different way of processing information. And that way of processing information creates issues with traditional learning and with literacy uh, and with some executive function. And even into math, it can cause problems right across the curriculum. But it also comes with a huge pattern of strengths. And as a charity, we're very much focused on supporting the strengths, but making sure that we're actually skilling up teachers so they can give the right support in the classroom and early. So as a charity, that really is our focus to make sure that every single teacher is given the help and support that they need to support dyslexic children in the classroom. Um, Mike's talked about the teacher training materials that we've produced. If you haven't checked them out, I really, really would urge every educator and every parent to check them out, particularly now as we're in a situation where uh, parents are doing a lot more with their kids and teachers are perhaps having to dig a little bit deeper to work out how to support kids in the, the really difficult times that, that we're um, facing at the moment. But just to touch on um, the remote learning and the homeschooling that's happening at the moment. Uh, we've been running some uh, questions and, and we put some social media posts out to our community just to get a feel for how everybody is feeling about this whole remote learning situation, whether it's better for dyslexic kids, whether it's causing a huge amount of anxiety, uh, just to get a real sense of of what's happening um, and what we've had back is really really interesting and I'd love to share it with you today and then um, we'll also see Rachel's experience with her own kids as well I think would be really really interesting to, to share those insights. There was some research done by First News which is um, a kids newspaper in the UK that actually found that 56% of children really really like homeschooling and learning remotely. And we have actually found across our community that there is a real, real sense of um, lots and lots of pluses around the whole remote learning. Um, some of them include kids being able to work at their own pace. That was a really, really big one. 
um, lots of project work so so kids could actually dig deep into subjects if, if they want to immerse themselves in things. Uh, the ability to take breaks as well. We we found a lot of the community said that that was really vital in the work in the classroom. They find it really difficult to take the breaks when they need to take them. But with remote learning, that seems to be something that they can do really easily. Um, they also said that the use of technology across all learning is absolutely transformational. There's a huge amount of, of um, you know, writing things down, copying from boards and things that happen in, in class where actually if you can use technology across everything, it is completely transforming. So there's lots and lots of benefits. Um, but Rachel, what what do you feel about? What are your kids feeling? What are your feet, your um, sort of sense with your community and network into the benefits around this the situation that we're we're all in at the moment? Yeah, Kate, thanks. Um, some of the benefits that again might be you know unexpected greats are uh, you had mentioned the self pacing and that's a huge thing when it comes to probably all students but in particular students who learn differently uh, self pacing versus being in an environment where you're doing back to back classes and um, those of us who process language differently as in dyslexia need that ability for the brain to kind of process what's happened. Uh, the other thing that my community members and I'm noticing with my students too is the fluid schedule and allowing students the choice over when or how they're doing that schoolwork. And then again, that choice in the inputs and, and how, with regard to how, you know, again, am I handwriting my assignment or am I using dictation? Um, so another benefit to that is that the home environment is very non-stigmatizing. You're no longer worried about how you're going to look if you're ear reading or if you're voice typing versus when you're sitting in a classroom doing those things, it might look a little bit different. Um, the, the thing that I notice and many of my community members are noticing as well is there's more stamina for our dyslexic learners because again, um, their classes are spaced apart. They're getting what we call brain breaks in the middle of their learning. They can go get a little bit of exercise or have a snack. And so when they have that ability to process the language and not back to back in that manner, um, they're ready for the next session when it comes up. So I don't you know. Another thing I think about Kate too is that COVID made it a necessity to be more flexible in terms of coursework um, for edu you know the educator side of things. And so previously, um, I know you've talked about this with your um, your own sons and some of the students that you hear from in the UK. Previously, students with dyslexia, the amount of coursework can be very heavy and very draining, and they have a hard time with that. But now that's changed due to the situation and we've had to be a little bit more flexible and lenient. What are your thoughts? Any more on that? Yeah, no, I, I definitely agree. I mean, the, uh, we, we have no exams in the UK this year, which I think is a sigh of relief to a lot of dyslexic kids. And I definitely. think that there's, yeah, there's more coursework being done um, and this, the use of technology is such a, a huge issue. I mean, in most of the exams in the UK, you have to hand write them unless you have special accommodations to use a computer, which, you know, we, we know for, well, for right. when does anybody ever hand write something anymore? It just doesn't happen. Does it? <laughs> so I think what, what's really interesting is is the remote learning is is actually replicating real life really for as in working life mm -hmm. um, a lot more than education perhaps sometimes does um but some of the challenges that that uh we've we've heard people talk about um which i think would be really brilliant if you can when you're going to be talking about the technology aspect of things and i think a lot of them will be covered by this um the 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 fact that um, kids are actually uh, uh, one of the things that we've heard is that some some children are being expected to absorb masses of masses amounts of text, which obviously for mm -hmm. dyslexic kids is just not not easy. Yep. Um, and I know there's a lot you can do with with all of the Microsoft learning tools and and um, tech stuff that you can sort around support with around that. I think also being able to to break the organisational aspect is something that has also come up with um, the, the research that we've done, that actually having 
um, the instructions and the workload are quite overwhelming at times. And again, that's that's about chunking things. It's about using technology to actually set reminders and and all of those things. So again, I think tech is a, a good solution there. Um, and I think also if if I would really, really urge teachers and parents to, to check out the inclusive classroom module um, in our teacher training, in fact, most of the modules, because all of it is is really helping you to understand multi-sensory teaching, because I think a lot of that is can be missing when we're asking kids to, to learn remotely. So I think there, there's a huge amount of advice and support in the dyslexic teacher or dyslexia awareness training that I would really urge people to check out right now, because I think it's a great time to be looking at it. Lots of inspiring stories from celebrities as well, which is actually really good for kids to be watching during this time. Um, but I think, yeah, on, on average, we think what we're seeing is there's much more positivity around it than there is negativity. And of course, there's so many different ways that kids can be learning. The amazing videos and virtual tour of of um, exhibitions and museums and things. There's if, if you're a dyslexic kid who loves exploring and digging into things and have huge curiosity, which tend to be a real strong dyslexic thinking skills, there's just masses you can do now to explore. So, um, yeah, I think that would be my take on it. I don't know about you. Uh, yeah, you know, very similar to you, Kate, uh, there is a lot more independent time, which includes a lot of reading text and so very text heavy but thankfully you know we've got wonderful workarounds which i'm going to demonstrate shortly and then just the um you know another one that's top of mind for me is oftentimes uh schools and educators have multiple tech platforms instead of a singular use platform and multiple things that students need to be into every day like emails websites links to navigate for instruction assignments for their work and for turning in so so it gets to be like you said with that organizational piece that in itself gets really difficult and then and then they're not having that face-to-face -face verbal time so it it's kind of a compounded effect that which we have some really great solutions and i'd love to go ahead and demonstrate some of those if if you think uh we're ready for that kate yeah absolutely but just before you do another another plug for the training there's a brilliant module on memory and organization which has got lots of really really useful tips um so yeah check that out but i, I think i'm fascinated to to watch your presentation and see what you you're going to what tips you can give to us all okay so let's start out excuse me uh let's start out in edge browser Okay, I had closed out when I hadn't meant to. So we're gonna start out with one of my top favorites and uh, we're gonna start out with Immersive Reader. And right now I'm sharing with you Immersive Reader in Microsoft Word Online. And we have Immersive Reader built into Word, Word Online, OneNote Desktop, OneNote Online, and a couple other places. So we're gonna start here in Word and so when we have content that students need to read, if they can open that up in Word, they're going to be able to utilize that text to speech or what I call ear reading option. So if we just go under the view tab here and then click on immersive reader, this is this icon right here that you'll want to familiarize yourself with. We're going to get a skin that pops over top of the page and enables us with that text to speech. And it looks like we've got some syncing here with our internet, which is very common. Well, while it's doing that, why don't we go ahead and look at OneNote's immersive reader? So I'm switching over here to OneNote, the online version, and I'm going to go to the View tab, same as I would in Word, and then Immersive Reader. Let's see if we can get this to pop up here and sync up a little bit better. OK, so you'll see that now I've got the ability with just a, the click of the play button at the bottom of the screen to have my text read aloud. 
Okay. And so that reduces, um, Kate, I don't know if you think of it this way as well, but I know commonly in the dyslexic community, we talk about students with dyslexia like a, a power strip and multiple different plugins. And so when we have this time period of remote learning and they're, they have so many different things they're expected to do, in addition to reading a ton of content, we're essentially overloading that circuit breaker. And so if we allow them to have this text to speech, we can greatly reduce that, um, that potential for them to um, mass destruct, <laughs> so to speak. So we can change our voice speed and our voice settings. Again, knowing that students process information differently. And then over here off to the right, we can change our our text sizing, if you're like me, you're going to want to bump that up a bit. Our text spacing, we've got different fonts. We've also got different background colors. Again, knowing that individuals like to like to personalize how they consume their content and not everybody prefers to read text in the same manner. And so what I love about this is you don't have to prove a need to have access to these. These are afforded to everyone and you don't have to pay for it either. So under our grammar options, we can break words into syllables. We could highlight parts of speech and even show the labels above. And with this drop down here, we could change the color that we're highlighting as well. And then, I'm sorry, I'm reducing my distractions as I move on to the next one, which is our reading preferences. So reading preferences gives us the ability to choose how we'd like to focus on our content. And so we can drop down our focus to just one line at a time, or if we prefer, we can have the whole page at a time. My absolute favorite feature is done in conjunction with BoardMaker, and they make the visual images for individuals with speech and communication disorders. So you'll notice I've clicked on a word, and now I have a photograph popping up to create meaning or help me comprehend, which is, again, really helpful for students of of all abilities, but in particular when we're talking about students who process language differently, um, this is this is a godsend. So, and then last but not least, we can translate um, to a different language. With this drop down, we can choose the language we prefer, and then we can choose document or just a word. And now I've got my document in Spanish. Okay, so what I love is that we also have picture dictionary following in Spanish, and then we can toggle between both the original and the Spanish at the top of the page. So that's in a nutshell the immersive reader function built into OneNote. And again, I was using OneNote online. This is this is what we would um, what the document looked like outside of that. So as I mentioned, we had it in Word as well, and so now it, it's everything uh, is working appropriately in Word. You'll notice it's the exact same as OneNote. So I've got my icons over here and then my play button down below. And if I was to escape out of that, here's that Word document. I would click on view and then immersive reader. In this case, since we are short on time, I'm going to show you another capability built in here with Immersive Reader. And so this is utilizing Edge Browser, and um, I'm going to show you why Edge is such a phenomenal tool and you might want to make it your primary search engine. So when utilizing Edge Browser, you'll notice we have Immersive Reader built in. So here's that little icon up in the top here. And I've got just a mainstream internet search here, but this is one of my favorite K-12 websites in terms of educational content. And so this is again, something that during remote learning, my, my students or my children and kids in our community can be directed towards to do that independent learning. So if we click on the immersive reader button, Kate, um, we get a view that wipes out all of those ads and just think, you know, from one dys dyslexic to another, think about how much easier that is to read, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like focus mode just right there. So we can click the read aloud button. And so you'll see our text is highlighting and reading aloud, but even better than that, 
I get this toolbar that enables me with the same capabilities we had in Word and in OneNote. So I can increase my text sizing. I can put some spacing in there. Let's get down to some text here. I can choose a different background color. Again, I've got my reading preferences, so if I wanted to change how much I'm focusing on at one time, I could. And then we've got those grammar tools. So all of these things built in right here into Edge Browser, and anyone can download and utilize Edge Browser as their search engine. And so I'm noticing that we have just a couple minutes left, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back over to our PowerPoint. And I'm going to call out a couple of slides that we have. Unfortunately, I don't think we've got the time to go through them, but this slide deck and um, the contents are going to be available post uh, live event today. And so I just want to call out Office Lens. And this is another great tool for the immersive reader capabilities. And then my, my kids at home here have found during remote learning, they can also utilize Office Lens for some of the worksheets and packets that were sent home with them. And so if you wanna, if individuals wanna take a look at this post live event, they can look at these two clips on Microsoft Office Lens and even download Office Lens themselves. Again, um, that's a free app in the App Store for iPad, iPhone, and Android devices. So that's in a nutshell what I've got for you, Kate, that um, has greatly helped during this period of remote learning and tools that, whether we're remote or back in the classroom, phenomenal at leveling the playing field for dyslexic students. Fantastic, loads of really, really amazing stuff. I think the other piece of advice I, I would give to any parent, um, uh, particularly parents and students, it's, is not to panic. Um, I mean, there's so many amazing things that they can do and learn and, and immerse themselves in just to be able to absorb information and learn new things. And it's, you know, it's not easy for every child, but there are lots of things there that can help. So I think just explore and have fun and read lots, lots of audio books, lots of films, lots of exploration is definitely the way to go. Would you agree with that, Rachel? Totally would agree with that, especially the not panic part. Um, yeah. Our kids are going to remember how we, you know, years from now, they're going to remember how we handled this situation. If we're in, if we're in a flap about it, they're certainly going to remember that. Um, yeah. One more thing before we go, Kate, is um, up right now, the slide that I have is uh, short, sweet, interactive guides individuals can take from the comfort of their own home and they're self-paced. They're broken out into reading writing, math, and communication. And so again, post event, please take a look at these and um, learn all about these wonderful tools that are accessible to you. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Rachel. That was that was great. Thank you, Mike, for having us on this evening. I'm sure we could talk for miles, miles longer, but um, we've run out of time. So thanks so much. We're really looking forward to all of the amazing things that Made by Dyslexia has got coming up in the, the next few um, weeks and months to announce. But um, thanks very much. Great to see you this evening. Thank you so much for joining us, Kate. Thanks for staying up late, too. It is very late in the UK. I was joking earlier that Kate was going to have to have some Red Bulls to be able to stay up and, uh, and make the <laughs> webinar. So thank you for joining us, uh, as well as Rachel. It's a little less late in Minnesota, but you know, it's a couple hours ahead. So thanks a lot, folks. And I'm just going to wrap up with our recap of the updates. Uh, we've got the Made by Dyslexia uh, Part 1 and Part 2, the free courses on the Microsoft Educator Center. And make sure you check those out if you haven't already. They're great for families as well. It's not just for educators. We have the special education page for early education. That's a new one as well. It came out last week. And then highly capable and twice exceptional. That's another really important topic, especially during distance learning. And we have a new educator center page there. The notes in the PowerPoint deck, this full deck will be posted tomorrow morning. We also will be posting the recording of this video on our YouTube playlist, and that's going to be coming out again tomorrow morning with all of our other shows posted on YouTube. And then if you ever have an issue, you have a, a bug or some other thing you're trying to figure out as a teacher, we've got a support site. And so this link right here is for any educator to file a support ticket. We have support experts who are only focused on educators and schools. And then coming up, 
these are the next few days. We've got virtual graduations and teams live events. Wednesday, May 20th. There are some really creative and interesting ways that people are using live events, virtual graduation. Actually, Minecraft during a virtual graduation is very common. And the next day we have Minecraft in education during remote learning. That's on a Thursday, May 21st. And then and Tuesday after Labor Day in the US, May 26th. This one is interesting. I'm a musician, so I really like this one in particular. Innovative music education during distance learning. And we have uh, Nacho Azor and Andrew Fitzgerald gonna be showing some really cool stuff happening with music education during distance learning. And then at the bottom is the schedule. So all the latest updates will be there and we'll be posting some new webinars in the near future. Other than that, thank you very much to Maryline behind the scenes running the show and we will see you soon.